Your biblical pages are dimensional, like a, a doorway in their scope. I think we can prove that to you right now. This is the prison of Jesus. This is where he put Jesus for one night. That's deep inside a cave. I'd like to draw your attention to these three words. A cave underneath the heart of the city, the old city of Jerusalem, right there. This is the jail. This is the room where they held Jesus. Here, right here. here. Hey, search at the door. First, you gotta check your cell phones and cameras. And first, you gotta know where it even is. And third, they got cameras in the room where God was blocking the cameras on the ceiling with his head. Right here. In the beginning. Wait a second. In the Hebrew, these three words are actually just one word. Just like God himself seems to want you to know that he is three in one. Father, Son, and the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. If we skip all the way back in time, in Genesis 1 verse 3 is where God says, let there be light. This is the ancient Hebrew symbol for three, the Gimel up there. Genesis 3, three temptations in the garden. Eve saw that it was attractive to the eyes, good to make one wise, and it would make one become as gods. The flesh, the mind, and the spirit. There were, of course, three items, three symbolic items in the Ark of the Covenant. Ancient Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Three men tossed into the flames. Of course, Jonah in the belly of the whale for three days. And in their midst was another who had the appearance of a man. Fast forwarding, that actually is the amount of temptation right there. Jesus was tempted three times, right? He was 30 years old when he started his ministry, which lasted for three years, at which point he was crucified at the age of 33. That's here, Jesus was sitting, and the two angels were sitting next to him. When he was crucified, there were three crosses. Today, your hidden cameras are taking you down the spiraling staircase and all the way in and then he was in the tomb for what was it three days and after that the biggest thief in Jerusalem was sitting here in this side wow. see yeah what you're looking at right here on this narrow path with the car blocking us down this road sides and he knows that we get trying to get to the sunset we're actually racing up this road here to make it to the Mount of Ascension. Police with the government, big problem. Oh, if I go down there? Yeah. Okay. When you are looking at the Hebrew letters, even the modern ones, which is what's on the screen back here. The language itself reads from right to left, all languages point inward towards Israel. This language behind me, you start with the, the modern Hebrew, Aleph. That's what she looks like. And this, and it's in that water down there where Jesus healed the blind man. Yes. Okay. Well, this right here on the screen, this short, and this small. And this is Uncle Abmusa. Right here that has the ancient dangling keep the Lord oh, definitely sent us opening for us the pool and Hezekiah's tunnel now the Aleph seen right there the first letter is actually comprised of one two three three parts two yodes and each yod is a perfect ten they're called creation points and also a valve 
when the valve, seen right here, where the number six, just like man was created on the sixth day, in the midst of the Aleph, well, six is the number of man. So that valve is embedded between the two creation points is the symbol for a man. Backwards in time to the book of Genesis, you find this mysterious character named Melchizedek. The book of Genesis states that appeared before Abraham coming across the horizon were three what looked like men. Thank you, Abu Musa. Thank you. But particularly if I go all the way backwards, this behind me, this pictographic and phonetic language is a language which create Chinese and all of your other languages. Okay, thank you. Egyptian. Okay. From this language back here, these 22 digits were 11 and 11, or Genesis 1-1. What looked like men. Now, two of them would be the angels that would end up going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But the one in the middle was God himself, but he looked like a man. This interesting character who had no beginning nor end, Melchizedek. And this is the pool of Siloam. Well, Melchizedek, that's not a name. That's actually a title. Okay, we go down. Thank you, Abu Musa. That's, that's awesome. This name right here, Melchizedek, means priest of righteousness and king of Salem, or the first king of Jerusalem. Let me ask you this. Melchizedek, priest of righteousness and king of Salem. Well, there are only three parties in your entire Bible that carry a title like that. And that's a heck of a title for merely a man. 2,700 years ago. Look. Okay. See? Okay. Wow. This on the screen behind me. Each letter equaling a number. That behind me, that's a powerful language right there. That right there is the tongue of angels and men. And these are, uh, these are, and, so, and this writing that we're looking at. Yes, this is very old Jewish this, writing. This writing that's on this, uh, on this wall right here. What they call pre-Canaanite. Right, this writing behind me, this is what gave birth to Canaanite. And these letters here, the Aleph and the Bet, that's actually in English where you get the word Alpha Bet. This is the guide that picked us up right as we're walking along the city of Jerusalem. Please be careful, slowly. He states, this man that picked us up just out of thin blue air tells me that one time he had been dead for a week. The Lord brought him back to life. We'll get to that. You believe in miracles? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah, let me show you something very important. And this here, the bull with the horns. Horns are a symbol of authority, headship, leadership. That's why the devil wants you to look, I've got the horns, I've got the horns. And this is the part where, right after we get in the van, he says to me that uh, he believes he can get me into the garden tomb when nobody is there. The Aleph is the shh, silent letter. It's starts everything. It's there, but yet it's hidden, not there. Here we are walking up to the garden tomb. You can literally see my shadow right down there as you go down this pathway. This is after hours. It is never not packed the moment those doors open. Now, if God says I am the, the Aleph to the Tav, now that's the Tav right there, or in the, in the Greek, I am the Alpha to the Omega. Now, the Omega is the number 800. And the number 8 
up there, that's the number of new beginnings. Actually, five, that's the number of grace, and three more would be eight. But more than that, that's how many people there were on Noah's Ark. Walking up to the garden tomb on this first visit, there's the guard that's going to say, you're not coming in, we're closed. Eight is also, well, you have seven days in your week. That's actually modeled after the creation week. On the seventh day, God rested. Well, your eighth day would always be the new beginning. When they tell you you can't go, how you do that is you place a fistful of shekels right in their hand and keep on moving. Noah had three sons on the boat. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. But it was Noah's son Shem of the three sons, Shem is who Noah crowned the highest blessing on, the symbol for the Shin or the Wa, which is actually interchangeable with the Vav, the sixth number. But speaking of the ancient Vav, the sunset that's poking through, that's, you're not, <laughs> that's the Lord that set up these shots. But that's the letter right there that represents the nails in Jesus's hands. Now on that, that cross, that tov, there would have been three nails, three crosses. There were three vavs, one in each hand, three nails, the number six, three nails. That's correct, right? This is on the screen here. This is the same guard that I walked up to and handed handed a bunch of uh, and some shekels to. This is that's the full size Noah's Ark in Kentucky. It answers in Genesis. Built. These are the little baby dinos that answers in Genesis. Put on that boat. Eight number of lives that were on Noah's Ark. Eight people, the number of new beginnings. And not only are there, there dinosaurs on the boat, atheists were the first people to go check out the, of course they were. And they loved it. Eight lives turns out to be an important number. The number of new beginnings. Eight lives on Noah's Ark. But this same guard, this is him on the screen helping us sneak in to the building at the entrance to the garden tomb right there and to the rabbis shem or that three-pointed crown right there see ancient version means the hidden name of god that's actually where you get the the wa the w in our english like in yahweh this lady here, she's gonna explain, no, 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 we're closed, we're closed. I'm gonna ask her, could you, could you please let us in? She's gonna go talk to somebody now. That symbol, that little guy right there, that looks like a crown of a king, is the number 300. While she's off discussing whether or not we can go in, maybe I got just a pinch ahead of myself. You can see me looking at the door right there. Three, two, one, and now omega, that's in the Greek. That equals the number, every letter equals a number. That's the number 800. If the tav or the cross, that's the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. God says, I am the Aleph to the tav, A to Z. If the tav is the number 400, well, that would be like the, the halfway point to the 800. The Omega. There's a man filming. I don't know what film crew that they were with, but I, I asked him, and you can see him moving his things right there. I asked him. I said, you know, we come a long ways. At the cross, the Tav, Jesus Christ said, "Behold, I make all things new." Jesus was in the tomb for three days. In the beginning, the, the Aleph, the first, which is in three parts, and to the Tav, there is 
is the sign right there in front of. Now, Omega, the number eight, let me see here, if I turn it sideways, becomes our symbol for infinity, doesn't it? Now, you said I am the Aleph to the Tav, or if God says I am the Alpha and the Omega, we need to film this tune today. Or the Alpha and Omega, which is the number 8800, you would really be stating, you can see the cameraman physically move his stuff. I am the beginning and the new beginning. I am right inside that door where Jesus was for three days. But this is the tomb. These are the rock walls. And behind me, you're looking at the place where Jesus, that doorway right there, that's where the stone was that was rolled away. And it's through this doorway that Jesus Christ stepped outside from this area right over here. This is where he stepped right outside of the tomb and walked out into here. So, and behind me is the garden. This is the drive up to the Mount of Ascension. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Twisting around through these narrow, windy paths that are going uphill, where we're headed is to the Mount of Olives, to the very top of the Mount of Olives. No man cometh before the Father except through me. That's John 14, which would be 7 and 7. Now, I believe that I can prove to you right now that all of biblical, all of history itself, the Aleph to the Tav, can be is embedded right in these three words, three little words, right here. In the beginning. Just those three words. On the screen, around all of these windy corners, right here. Now, if you're one of the folks that sees 11, 11, 22 is what that would be, or Genesis 1 1 on your clocks a peculiar amount of times I guess somebody has been calling you to look at these the letters back here k4 is an artificial cave and this is uh, and this is k4 I'm gonna try and block the I'm setting you on a pole and I'm trying to block the audio this is hard to hold the kit but uh, in the beginning these three words are actually just this one word, Bereshit, and this one word is actually this set of one, two, three, four, five, six phonetic and pictographic symbols. Caves that will verify that the words of the Torah, word by word, letter by letter, these things are precise. Not just one or two tags on them. I'd like you to notice that this spirally symbol, the first symbol of the book of Genesis, the bet, is like a drop cap. The first place you actually find a drop cap, probably the first place it popped up in all of history, is right here on page one, the first letter, the I, in the beginning of the book of Genesis in old King James Bibles. But they were copying that from the way it was in the Torah. Those are the Dead Sea Scrolls right there. And they were copying it from the way that Moses got it. What the rabbis believe is that the first letter, the first Hebrew letter that starts a piece of text or a paragraph or a page, that letter should give you some indication of what the entire text is going to be about. In the case of this giant, emphasized bet that starts the book of Genesis, that 
emphasized bit right there. Well, that's the symbol for home. Don't get impressed yet. We're just getting started from Genesis to Revelation and everything between is about home. But if this is home, all of it, then who's home? This next letter that comes right after home, that looks like the profile, the side of a man's face right there, the resh equaling 200. That resh means head man or God man. Just like God created man in six, one, two, three, four, five, six days, there are six symbols, six letters that begin with this giant symbol for a home. Curvy maze like, look at these things that you twist this way up and there's only room for one car. So this second letter guy here, it looks like a man. It's like the side of a man, the resh. Second letter in, which equals 200. Okay, there we are. Hello. Say hi, mom. Hi, mom. There's What's the, you're uh, looking at? Sandy covered, salty covered. And true screen back here with this little girl buzzing towards and at you. That is clear down here coming out of Jerusalem, down here at the tail end, the bottom, and here in the Dead Sea of the country. But coming upward through the West Bank, right here on this little peninsula guy in the middle of the West Bank in Jerusalem. Jewish buried in that mountain because this is the valley of the judgment. At the end, everybody rose from the dead, judged them in that valley. When we walk to the Jewish quarter, we'll see all the cemeteries. We have nice view from there. Right there, that's in the heart of Jerusalem, right across from the city of David. This is on the same day that we got into the garden tomb while there was nobody there. On the second letter in, the head man or God man. Look at that sunset appearing over the walls back there in the horizon. But if I go three letters in to the third letter is the Aleph, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet divided into three parts. Two yodes, each yod is a ten, and between them is the vav, or the symbol of a man. You can see right here that glorious sunset coming over. That's the city of Jerusalem. In fact, that's the dome of the rock right there. Now watch this. The parts of the Aleph, the hidden letter, the silent letter. It's there, but it's not there. And it starts everything. It's parts, two yodes and a vav, the symbol for a man. 10, 10, and six equal 26 on the three and one. Now, in the unspeakable name of God, seen right there, yod, he, vav, he. That is, those four symbols make what's called the tetragram, which is three letters, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the symbol for a man, evolved, embedded in right there. On the drive up to the mount, the place where Jesus ascended into heaven. Five, hey, five, hey, six, and ten. 26. God says, I am the Aleph to the Toph. The Aleph is 26 and the unspeakable name of God. Three letters and a man is also 26. The Aleph seen right here in its 
pre-Canaanite, its ancient form, is called the father of the alphabet. It is three in one, the letter which starts everything. And its numeric value is identical to the numeric value of God's unspeakable name. That three in one is the third sum in of the six. All of these stones right here that we're passing, those are, those are graves. In fact, this right here, the place where Jesus will return again, this is, as the camera turns and you're looking back down on Jerusalem, the Aleph, the first, the start, the number one. The Aleph represents, right here, third letter in, in three parts, represents God himself. That down in there, all of these little stone guys, that is the most expensive graveyard on earth overlooking Jerusalem. Now if I come four in, one, two, three, four, we're just on the first word, which is in three parts of the book of Genesis. Four letters in, I find the, the Shen. The Shen equals 300, and that's something. Here's the ancient form. Here's the modern form. The shin represents the consuming fire, the teeth, or the three-pointed crown, the hidden name for God. More than that, the shin, literally four letters in, just like the tetragram. The crown, which equals 300. And by the way, when you hear Greek tales or mythologies of 300 men who went against an army and managed to get themselves slaughtered down to the last man, well, the inspiration for those stories is on Gideon's 300. And this is what it looks like when the camera, which is sticking outside of the car, hits a tree. Gideon met with an angel of the Lord God himself who looked like a man under a tree in the cool of the day. Gideon ended up taking 300 men and with the power of God himself, Gideon and his 300 conquered armies with not one man lost. The Shen looks like a crown of a king because it is a three-pointed crown of a king. Three, two, one, boom. The one, two, three, four, fifth letter in. Five's the number of grace of the six letters is the the power of the king of the three crowns was assuredly with Gideon and his 300 men that day. Next letter, the fifth letter, is the, the yod, like a little squiggle, a thought dangling just between heaven and earth. Or in the pre-Canaanite, the ancient version, this arm right here, a right arm, more specifically the strong right arm, just as Jesus sits at the right of the Father, the Yod is a perfect 10, just like there are 10 generations from Adam to Noah, 10 plagues in Egypt. 10 is one of God's numbers of completion. It's also a universal whole number. At Sinai, literally that mountain behind me, God gave 10 commandments. The first five are spiritual. The second five are for the flesh. The first commandment is no other gods before me. yod he vov he Every time that God got onto Israel, he points them to those Ten Commandments. 
when Jesus, when the disciples were telling Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you. And Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Ten. Number of completion. That yoke which dangles like a little thought or spirit of God between heaven and earth. That yoke right there is not only called the creation point, it represents the creator himself. The last one of the, of the six. Are you ready for it? Here we are walking up. And just across, you're looking down at all Jerusalem right there. And that glorious sunset, we arrived just on time. The last letter of this set of six, or the number of man, is the Tav right there. The last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. There behind me, you can see the dome of the rock again. This is on top, looking down into the Mount of Olives, the Mount of Ascension. Now, watch this. Here's the, here's the last letter. The first word in three parts is the, the Toph, the, the cross. I don't think I have to tell you what that last letter right there, what that symbol represents. What you're looking at right here is that perfect window. There is no such thing as halfway of the day. As the camera turns. So let's reread this sentence, which comes from the first three words of the book of Genesis. Bereshi, Genesis. It says that this is the home, this place, all of it. This is the home of the head man, the God man who is God, the number one, who is in three parts, wearing the crown of three parts, the Shin, who is the right arm, the strong right arm of the Father, the Creator Himself, who will go to the cross, and all of that, every last drop of it, came out of the first word, which is in three parts in English in the beginning. In the book of Genesis, you are looking straight into the place where Jesus ascended with an angel on each side up into heaven and the most gorgeous sunset of all Jerusalem in the background. Yeah, that, uh, that really is a whole lot more information than just stating in the beginning, isn't it? Here's the truth. Genesis 1-1, the first chapter of Genesis, the first six days, day seven does not come until chapter two. But in those six days, you find at the end of Genesis chapter one, man, the perfect image of man, man in the image of his creator, God. Bet you will never guess what the entire sentence in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah, I bet you'll never guess what that first sentence, just that first little sentence guy of the book of Genesis 1-1.
What this is, is in the 30 minutes that you just watched, uh, or, and this, what's in my hand, is about two hours. It's not about, it is. It's two hours and 15 minutes, maybe a little better than. It's, this entire thing is, you can see all of the colors down here as I come up. We're going up the top of the Ozark Mountains here. yod he vov he the, the God dimension. And it looks like this. And so basically, it looks like Merry Christmas out here while I'm riding up. This is a roller coaster thing that I'm on. There is, there is no journey. There's no journey on all Earth like this journey. Most unusual ride on all Earth. It's just a beautiful ride up to the top. It would be completely pitch dark in here if it didn't have all of these lights that were going on the, on the track. I'm going to be stunned by what that first sentence reads and the journey that goes this way and that the argument of, is it real? Is the place you're in, do you, when you step out of this place, do you walk into another dimension? ride unlike buy the ticket take the ride there's just no ride like it on all earth and that's by the way what i asked the lord for when i said into i didn't even know what the title of this was going to be until i was done with it i said look it was the most joy that i ever had really in truth putting together one of these videos i i just would say lord lead me through this day show me stuff that and he would he would i mean it's like the whole thing like just what you watched except actually what you just watched is just a taste of what there is when you it was like he would show me the next big thing and you would say well surely it can't get better than that and then boom it would get better than that you say oh surely that's got to be the end boom it would get better than that all the way all the you're gonna love this there's nothing and the way that it ends the way that it ends. I would be robbing you to tell you. If there were nothing else that you ever got, you never got anything from God in a nutshell, at least with what we've got today, the one thing that I would want you to have for it to be yours, your copy, tangible, tangible thing in your hand. Here's what it looks like on the inside. One thing that was yours from God in a nutshell, it would be this disc right here. I'm Trey Smith. Thank you for watching The God Dimension. Available at GodDinutshell.com. And God bless every last one of you and your families. A covering. I'm praying for revival. Revival in such a way that the generations that have passed would be jealous. Not just in this land, but in all lands. I'm Trey Smith. God bless every last one of you on the other side of the screen. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Tell me that's, tell me that's not pretty. Heard of the sun and the sky, but I was missing.